We're going to be uh, talking about faith in our sermon series and spiritual gifts. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, we talked about receiving gifts and gifts that we have, but the gift of faith is a little bit different from that. You know, we all get faith when we become believers, but some are gifted with a special gift of faith. And I want to say, man, let's open that package. Again, I want to welcome our visitors. Welcome first-time visitors, and I want to welcome our children today, too. And as we pray, let's just lift up a prayer to our children and the children of our community, because as we end, uh, get ready to end August, guess what happens? Back to school, man. So we'll start to pray for that, and uh, we'll kick this service off. Um, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, uh, thank you so much for bringing us together this morning. Lord, as we lift up our prayers and praises to you, Lord, we lift up our children that are here with us today, and we lift up the children in our community, uh, Father, as they get ready for their last season of fun before school, which is going to be fun. And But Father, we pray for their wisdom and knowledge, and Lord, for their faith to be strengthened, Lord, as they go through this next school year. Father, uh, we're so thankful and we're blessed, Lord, to worship not only in prayer, in music, but now in the Word of God and in testimony, too. Be with us today. May your spirit be with us, and may your gifts be poured out upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here we are in the spiritual gift of faith. And so um, we left one more out for next week, and, but faith actually comes up in the series. And uh, Miss Aries is a woman of faith, too, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But, man, what a day of faith. As we were preparing for this weekend, we have a banner, a flag that's out, which we had made months ago for faith. And that was before we knew that we were going to do this sermon series. And so the banner of faith just happened to be selected for today and this weekend, so we're flying a banner of faith out in front of the church. How many people saw it? Man, pretty incredible, isn't it? I want to say that was an accident on our part, but not by God, right? Man, uh, coincidence isn't kosher, is it? Man, no way. So what is the spiritual gift of faith? And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, the spiritual gift of faith can be found among the gifts of 1 Corinthians 12, and in verse 9 it says, For some people are given the gift of faith, but the gift is not specifically explained. Isn't that amazing? No explanation. You just have this amazing gift of faith. So we'll kind of unpack a little bit of that, and then Miss Aries will help us understand what that means in practical language. So all believers have been, have been given faith uh, by God uh, as a means of salvation. So all of us came to Christ through faith, didn't we? We believed and we became saved to the process. That's Ephesians chapter 2. But not all believers are given this particular spiritual gift in the measure that it's given. Like all gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gift of faith is given for the common good, which means it edifies the body of Christ. Are you ready to be edified? Man, bring in the edification. So, yeah, um, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 7 really talks about that. And that's why these gifts are given. And again, when we started out this series, a spiritual gift isn't given, you know, just for us to keep and hang on to. I've got this wonderful gift of faith. I'm just going to hang on to it. I'm going to cherish it and nurse it and keep it to myself. But the gifts aren't really meant for that. They're meant for everybody. If you have a gift, you've got to share it. So the gift of faith may be defined as a special gift whereby the Holy Spirit provides Christians with an extraordinary confidence in the promises of God. Who wants an extraordinary measure of the promises of God? Amen. Yay and amen. I want every single thing that God has, right? Who doesn't? Man, faith is one of those gifts, so it comes with God's promises, power, and, uh, and the person that exhibits this level of faith can take a heroic stand on what God is going to do in the future for the church. Often these people seem like heroic when it comes to faith. 
The spiritual gift is exhibited by one who is strong and unshakably confident in their ability to speak toward God in faith and in trust. How would you like to know a person like that? Unshakable faith, unwavering, you know. I think about my combat days, and those are the kinds of people that we, we look toward and we hope that we see. People that just know that this is going to happen, it's going to work, uh, everything that God promised is going to be fulfilled in those ways. And when we see those people, they strengthen us. We take strength from that. Those are the type of people that exhibit this kind of unshakable confidence. So some examples that we have in Scripture are like from Hebrews chapter 11, heroes of the faith, but they're heroes that um, they did specific things specifically trusted. How about Noah? Preaching 120 years to a world that wasn't faithful at all, was it? They didn't believe in God at all. In fact, they laughed about it. But Noah had faith. Uh, what about Sarah and Abraham? Wow. You're going to have a baby at 90. Wow, good luck with that. That's faith, isn't it? Wow. Does that seem possible in the natural? No, but faith is really beyond reason, isn't it? In so many ways, faith takes us that extra level beyond reason. But they had confidence that it was going to happen. Did they help a little bit too? Oh, they did. But did God make it happen? Did they have faith? They actually did, and they named their first child Laughter. Man, because they laughed about it. But I want to say that kind of faith, that kind of humor, man, it's heroic to see what God is able to do. Take a look at Hebrews chapter 11 and see who those heroes are of faith. But honestly, your name is probably going to be in those pages in the future because you also are people of faith. So as all spiritual gifts, uh, as with all spiritual gifts, gifts are given to some Christians to use to edify the body of Christ, and those gifts are inspirations to us. And so this morning, I wanted to bring Miss Ari Graves in and give us some inspiration and some encouragement about faith and uh, how we walk and how we walk this out. Because it's one thing to teach on it and look at scriptures for faith, but it's a whole other thing to meet a person of faith and have them walk out all of the pieces of what that means. And faith isn't easy. And sometimes it isn't easy to encourage. And I'm just going to say this about Aries. She just came from counseling. Uh, she was a camp counselor, and she's done that for many years. And, I mean, I, how long have I known you uh, since you were like, woo, a long time. And I've watched you come up in your faith and in your strength, both through real-life church, internships, as a teacher that teaches children. I've watched you grow up into this mighty woman of God, this woman of faith. And so it's been so amazing to watch your journey. But she just came from counseling, was it 100 and 250 children? Yeah. Wow. How do you feel? Man. <laughs> Ready to be gone. Yeah. Man, God is good. Uh, Aries, uh, why don't you come on up and... Uh, I've known this, and I say young lady, but man, she's an incredible woman of God. I've known her for such a long time, and uh, I'm so glad that she is able to and willing to share her testimony, her ministry with you. You're going to learn something of faith and about what faith means when you exercise it and walk it out, both in the Word of God and in example. And so, Aries, it is my privilege and pleasure to invite you here and I'm so excited for what you're going to say. I've watched you teach and lead and uh, follow your faith all of these years. And so uh, let's give uh, the Lord a hand clap for Miss Aries. Man. And uh, we're going to set her up with a microphone. And uh, yeah, what a privilege it is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to hand you this. And we're going to set you up. Ooh, I get the fancy one. Get the fancy yeah. microphone. This is the big kid microphone. <laughs> I'm a big kid. Oh, thank you for letting me get away with that. Of course. And then you want to put that in right there. Right here. Yeah. 
I got this. <laughs> Man. Did I do it right? Yeah? Good? Man, yay! Can you hear me? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so yeah, just like Rod said, <clears throat> came from youth camp, and we had about 250 kids come in and just have their lives completely changed. It was such a beautiful thing. God came through, chains were broken, and a lot of people were yelling, hence why my voice sounds like this. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, because God could still use me. Uh, but I'm so happy to be here. It's such an honor to speak to this amazing community. Um, and it's also just an honor to be here um, when Rod has literally watched me grow since sixth grade. Um, I went to real life church from a friend. Um, she actually stopped going. And, I kept going. Uh, and Rod was one of the people I first met. And he likes to tell a lot of jokes. And the jokes he told me couldn't get it, maybe because I was that young. Um, but yeah, he has watched me grow into a kid that experienced a lot of darkness growing up in her household um, to someone that's just like, I, I want to see who God is, and I want to see what it looks like for God to use me. Um, and then here I am, 22 years old, not only being a youth leader, but a teacher in many different ways. Um, and, and now I got the opportunity for God to just use me today. So um, I want us to go to Psalms 23. If you do have your Bibles, um, I'm going to be, we're going to read a couple of scriptures from Psalms. We're going to love Psalms today. Um, the book of Psalms is amazing. It always speaks some really good things. But yeah, Psalms 23. <clears throat> and I'm just going to read the whole chapter because it's only six verses. But it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, but leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love <clears throat> will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How many of you guys know that message? We, we know that passage very well. Um, and the one that I want to focus on the most is verse 4, when it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That is a sign of faith right there, throughout that whole verse. And with that, my grandma, we're going to talk about my grandma, because she was the great ex example in my life of kind of the worst things, or what not to do. She, I was actually raised by my grandma. Um, I love her. She's literally my best friend. We're still together to this day, and it makes me so happy. Um, and she molded me into the woman that I am today. But it was rough. It was real hard. Um, my grandma put a lot of fear in me. And as we know, God does not give us the spirit of fear. That's the spirit of faith. And I learned at a very, very young age. Um, she raised me in the church. So I remember going to countless amount of churches, um, you know, seeing her praise God and other people raise their hands. Uh, this church in mind, it was very interesting because they'll stay in worship for the longest time. And every now and then someone will like fall to the floor and my five-year-old brain is like, what happened to the person? But the Holy Spirit touched them. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, my grandma always told me something about why God is good, why you need to follow him. And I was like, oh, there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would it be better to use that one instead? You can still hear me? Okay, I'll keep going. Um, 
But yeah, she's just like, you have to pray. You have to worship. You have to do this, this, and this without really helping me understand who is God and why I should. But I, I listened to what she said. I said, okay, I'll believe in God. Um, and I would go to school. People would talk about many different things. And I'm the one saying, yeah, I don't think God approves. Who's God? I don't know. But I just follow him. <laughs> um, and it's been that way all my life. Um, but the thing is, the way that my grandma went about who God is was putting fear in me. You know, she, she abused me. There was a lot of physical abuse, and there was a lot of verbal abuse. Uh, if she saw anything that was wrong, she, in her mind, was like, okay, for you to understand, I can't have to beat it into you. And of course, when I was younger, I couldn't understand that. It's like, I, I didn't know a lie was that bad. You know, I'm not supposed to lie. Or, I'm sorry, Grandma, I didn't know I was supposed to stay up this late. But why hurt me, you know? Um, there was so much hurt, so much pain that my grandma gave me. And all I could do throughout life, going into school, going into church, even doing things at home, I just did everything right, but I did it through fear. But when my grandma gave me fear, the Lord gave me faith. And how he did that is showing up when I was weak, he was strong. I am the only child. I have no siblings. And I was able to see my parents every now and then. So it was just me and her, which means it was just me and her words. She spoke a lot of lies into me. She spoke a lot of hurt because she was in a lot of pain. It's just generations from my family, on my dad's side mainly, of just abuse. And how to teach another is to be in them. And so she was just working with what she got. But I was also her only granddaughter. Everyone else were boys. So she's like, I got to protect her. Just how like God wants to protect me. Not in that way, though. But her, she was like, I have to protect her. So I have to keep her safe by blocking everything out. And by whenever she makes one little mistake, just being right on her butt. I understood. To this day, I understand why she did what she did. She had a heart. She had the best interest at heart for me. But she didn't know how to go about it, so she did her best. Um, but of course, in those times when she was trying to teach me to do right, to not do the wrong, instead, I took that and I just cried. I took that and I, it like belittled me. I was such a shy little girl growing up. Didn't think much of herself. I was very, I felt very unworthy. I did not have the confidence. I could not stand in front of my bullies. It was, it was very tough to try to be the girl that God wanted me to be. We all know that we're his sons and daughters which means we are prince and princesses above or under our king. But I couldn't be the princess he wanted me to be because of how I was raised. But it was so hard to face days because of the abuse that I had to go through. God somehow came through. And one of my favorite stories to tell, which I actually now have been starting to talk about it, um, is how the biggest way he came in my life was through imaginary friends. Raise your hand if you had an imaginary friend in your life. I've had plenty. <laughs> um, especially since I was the only child, had no sibling, barely had friends because I was also bullied at school, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I, I had imaginary friends. They were close. Um, I was able to create them in all different heights, with all different voices. There were so many. But there was this one imaginary friend that, like, I could see that it was a him. I knew it was a him. 
and his height. I, I knew exactly how tall he was. Um, I could see how he dressed, but I couldn't see his face. All of my imaginary friends had a face, but he didn't. But that was okay. I wasn't bothered by it. And there's this one specific moment that I'm thinking of, and this was mental, where somehow I upset my grandma. And she calls me into her room, and she's laying in her bed, and, and she is she's saying some things that I shouldn't say in a church. <laughs> um, and I have no choice but to sit there and listen to it. I can't cry because it will make her more mad. And I couldn't speak because it was tough. So I just had to sit there and listen. And in that moment, I was feeling so defeated because there was lies being spoken into me and I was starting to believe them. But there's that imaginary friend. He came back. And she's like right there. I'm standing here right in the doorway too. And I just feel this presence stands right here. Uh, and I'm just like, hey, I can't give you any attention, friend. I'm, I'm getting scolded by my grandma right now. You got to go. And he's like, no, I'll, I'll stand here with you, and we'll, we'll listen to this together. I was like, well, you don't need to listen to it, but OK. Um, and then it, it was just him and I both like looking at my grandma. And I'm starting to cry, and I'm starting to Yes, and that's when he turned around right into my ears and he was like, your grandma says that you're a disgrace, but I say that you're worthy. Your grandma says she's dis disappointed in you because you did this to, I forgot what I did and why I got, why she got so upset. Um, but he was like, but I'm so proud of you because you tried and you gave it up. Your grandma sees no hope in your future because she's so distorted. Her perception of life is so distorted. She looks at you and she thinks you're going to make the same mistakes, but I know that you will do great things in his name. And that's what I was like, in his name? Whose name? God's name. I didn't know until years later that that imaginary friend was my best friend and still is my best friend to this day, which is Jesus. Jesus came through, and he's been there since I was 3 to 13, and here I am, 22. I am still talking to him to this day. <laughs> but that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have faith. The beauty about faith is that anyone can have it. And faith is believing before you see it. You guys believe that oxygen exists, and it's there. You can feel it. You breathe it in and out. It gives you life, but we can't see it. I look at oxygen like how I look at the Lord. The Lord, he is very present, and he's always present through anything in life that you're ex experiencing. When you're so celebrating the highs of highs, he's there with you. When you are down in the dark valleys, he's walking that through you. But do you know that? There's some people that's just like, I don't feel him. I don't see him. How can I believe that? Well, one, get out of that closed mindset. It won't help you. We've all heard that there's power in the name of Jesus. And even if you feel uncertain, just say it and you'll see. You'll feel it. I've always felt it at such a young age, and here I am today. One of the things that I noticed about the Lord, as you're in your weakness, he gives you strength, right? But in that strength also comes prayer and forgiveness. For me to continue my faith, moving it forward and growing, I had to get comfortable in forgiving the people that gave me pain. The one that gave me the most pain was my grandma. I've prayed and prayed to God 
about taking my grandma out of my presence. And each time I've had my prayer, the next day I still see her. Or the next day I still hear those words. And all I could feel in my heart, starting in like middle school, so this is when I was a little bit more competent too, bitterness kept arising. It was like, how could someone say they love me and yet put me through all this pain? How could I forgive the person that is slowly chipping my life away? Because I was starting to have suicidal thoughts. I faced it twice. I can't forgive this person that is choosing to take me down this dark path. And that's when I found out that one of the ways that God gives you strength is relying on his understanding, not your own. One of the ways that he gives you strength is that through your prayer, what are you exactly praying for? I was praying for the wrong thing. I was telling God to take me out of this when all I really need is to help, have him help me through it, because I will get past it. And this leads me into scripture, Psalm 66, verse 17. It says, I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. When my my grandma gave me pain, God replaced it with the heart of forgiveness that set me free. Prayer is powerful. Prayer invites God and his power into the situations you face. It says in scripture to praise without ceasing, which means you're praying every moment in your life. You're praying when you have heard that you got the promotion you've been wanting, and you celebrate that with Jesus. And you also pray when you're experiencing a loved one on the deathbed. That is faith. You see that God can be in all the moments, and you're choosing to allow him to stay in all the moments, whether you know he's going to do something or not, whether you know the results of things or not. I did not know how I was going to get through this pain. 18 years of this abuse, I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. But I decided to pray because I trust in him that he has me and that he'll get me through it, which he did. But the thing is, I had to check my heart. Because like I said, I first started to pray about having my grandma kind of be taken away. God takes me away and I now live with my parents or all these family members from the church I grew in, which is real life, just take me in as their child. Because there was like, I would love to have you as my daughter. I'm like, great, take me because I don't want to be with my grandma. (laughs) Um, I didn't know what was going to happen, and I just kept praying, just take me out of it. And like I said, I shifted that prayer saying, okay, I can't get out of it, just help me through it then. And that's when I started to see change within me and the situation. See, God answers prayers, and I know we are all a testament of that, because here we are today. (laughs) We're alive today. He gives us breath in our lungs. And so it's already, already proof that he's present and he answers us. But some of the things that can hinder us from hearing his answers is when there is hidden or unconfessed sin in our hearts. One of those things is unforgiveness. I looked at my grandma through a very bitter perspective. 
and I couldn't see any change within her because of me. It was a little bit of a reflection. I reflected back negative stuff she gave it to me. And I was like, well, if you're doing this to me, I'm going to do the same to you. That did nothing. God could still do something in it, but for me personally, it will make it more challenging for him to not only reach into my grandma, but reach into the depths of the pain that I was experiencing. Unbelief is another one. Like I said, believe before we see, right? When you kind of have, when you're experiencing situations in your life, and just like, I just don't believe that God is truly going to get me out of this, I don't believe that I'm going to move forward. I don't believe whatever it may be. That's where you are already blocking his words that he needs to speak into you in that moment. Anger. The spirit of anger is not a beautiful thing. (laughs) That thing's ugly. (laughs) But when you have anger, you have a hardened heart. And God will still speak. God will still give you what you need and what you've been asking for. But when you have that spirit of anger deep down inside, you won't be able to perceive what he's trying to show you. He shows himself. But the spirit of anger blinds you. And then jealousy and envy are two other things, too, that blocks the answers that you've been wanting to find and seek with the questions that you have in life, with your relationships, like my relationship with, with my grandma. I was so jealous of other family members because they had a peaceful household. Every kid was able to play kids and laugh and not always have to be in arguments or listen to the parent or the guardian consistently bash on them. I was mad. And I was jealous. I was like, if God, if you love me this much, why didn't you put this in my life then? I thought you wanted me to have a good life. This is not a good life. And God's just like, I can it when you put me present in it. Can you hear me without hearing me through that anger, throughout that jealousy when you see another? Because I have something special for you here right now, but you can't see it when you have those spirits blocking you. So this shows how powerful prayer is because God not only hears, but then he is invited, so he is present. You are allowing and welcoming him into the moments in your life, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. But how do you go past that? How do you go past the hidden or unconfessed sin that you're that you're keeping, that anger or the unforgiveness. How can I go past that in my time in prayer with God? By giving him a chance. When you give give him a chance, you inherit his goodness. We all know that God is good. That's good is of God. But with that, It's a little hard to see how we can inherit his goodness when we're also not good ourselves. That's the kind of mindset I had when I started to know more about who God was in high school. I was like, okay, I'm far from good. (laughs) I can barely look at my grandma through love because of the pain I still hold in my heart. So how can I inherit your goodness? And that takes me to Psalms chapter 34. Verse 8 and 9. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who hear him lack nothing. So that's how I inherit his goodness. 
I take the time out to take that fear that my grandma put in me, kick that out, and understand that the fear I need is the fear of the Lord. And the more that I use faith to guide my path, whether I'm uncertain or in doubt, whether I know what's going to happen or don't, I'm going to allow faith to take my path. And the more that I do that, the more that I'll see him, and the more that I will taste his goodness. Inherit is a really cool word. I, I looked up to see what inheritance means. And the definition of inheritance is receiving a gift directly from Yahweh himself. Inherit in Hebrew is Nahala. It's a fun name. I kept saying it last night because it's just fun to say. Um, but yeah, receiving a gift directly from Yahweh himself from God himself. That means he's not only present, but he wants to give you what you lack. I lack forgiveness. So when I said, okay, then do you forgive everyone, God? Forgive me. And then somehow in some way, work in me to forgive my grandma. And because I was slowly working on that, it brings us to today. Like I said, my grandma and I are close friends. I see her almost every week. We talk about some beautiful things. She used to just not hear me at all. She's like, whatever you have to say, it's not important. But now to this day, she'll come to me and she's like, I know you perceive things this way. I'm confused. What does this mean? You want to hear from me? <laughs> she's like, yes. <"Yeah>, speak." <laughs> But that wouldn't have happened if I didn't allow myself to give God a chance so I can inherit that forgiveness that he has, that he wants to give me. My grandma was the perfect example of a bad example. And because of that, God transformed it all into good. And the only way that could happen is when I practice my faith. Just how like we will go to the gym. I've been going to the gym often. You know, my muscles will not be strengthened until I pick up a dumbbell, not stare at it. <laughs> so my faith will not grow, and I won't walk in confidence knowing that this too shall pass if I didn't practice my faith. When I had the bitterness in my heart, I had to have faith in God that he will change that into a soft heart. When I had jealousy in my heart, looking at other family members, or looking at other families that are just living their best life, I had to allow God to take that from me as I also let go, so he can replace that with gratitude. I had to use faith to help guide me in my journey of abuse, to get me not only out of the situation, but to the woman I am today, praising him daily, sharing his word, gospel, being alive. Like I said, I experienced and faced suicide twice. One was in seventh grade and one was senior year. I wouldn't have been here today if I didn't look to God and say, I don't know what's going to happen, but I have faith and trust in you. I wouldn't be here today helping other students from three years old with just my classroom to 13. I wouldn't be here today helping them through their experience with their own parents or their own guardian. The amount of stories I hear, they feel like, well, let me rewind. Just came out of youth camp, right? One of my, one of my students in my cabin, she, it was worship, and she was, she was fine for one moment, and then the next minute she was crying, and I turned around, and she just threw her body on me, and I was like, oh my gosh. And she just wanted to leave, but there was something that I was like, no, you can't just leave. Something has to break. You are welcome to talk about what's happening. And so when we left, someone prayed over her, and, I, 
And she was saying, I don't want to go back home because my mom perceives me in such a terrible way. She expects me to be like my two older, si two older sisters, but I'm not them. Her body language shows that she is just disappointed that she's the girl that she is. She was like, I, I just want to make my mom proud, and I never can. I've done so much to please her, and she's never pleased. I'm not satisfied. She's not satisfied. I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I shouldn't be here. She was just crying. And I was like, God, you made me for such a time as this. I see why faith exists. I see why you put me in the position I was with my grandma, because look who's set before me, your daughter crying out to you, asking for guidance. And Holy Spirit, we're going to come through, and we did. I talked with her and I shared her my story and I told her those are accusations and those are lies. Love your mom and respect your mom for she only knows what she knows and she don't know what she doesn't know. Your mom is going through things but that doesn't mean you have to carry that weight. You can use faith to walk through these, these terrible days that you have with your mom and you can use that to help you stay strong when she's weak. She doesn't know any better, and that's okay. There's times where we don't know any better, and that's okay. And I was telling her that she is worthy, she is loved, she's accepted for who she is. It's like, come as who you are and leave out of this place better than how you were. And I said, we can use that together in faith knowing that God will help you through it. And at the end of it, she was still processing because it was a lot of tears. But she was like, I haven't cried like that in like six months. I wasn't able to feel emotions, and now I can't. And I feel like I don't have to kill myself to see a better life. And I was like, you and me both, girl. Let's go praise the Lord together. <laughs> But yeah, that, if I didn't practice faith, I wouldn't be here today doing things like that, allowing the Lord to just use me as his vessel. And I wouldn't be able to change my grandma, seeing her mold and shifted to the woman that she is today if it wasn't for me using my faith, trusting in God. She is making a shift herself. She is choosing not to perceive life in such a negative way. She sees me now and she's like, I'm actually very not too long ago, she just remembered some things that she put me through and she was like, I don't know exactly what it did to you, but I'm sorry. I've never heard sorry come out of her mouth until as of recent. And she, there's one, many moments where she's like, I had an encounter with God and God wanted me to say this to you and I was like usually you can't hear from him you get so angry because you're like I don't know why he's not answering my prayers <laughs> I'm like he's answering you just can't hear it but <laughs> but she's like I heard him praise the Lord that wouldn't have happened if you didn't stay true to your faith in him Ari I didn't know it was that example and I was because I allowed faith to come in so what does having faith look like? I have some points for you. One, praying before, during. It says in the Bible, pray consistently. Prayer does not have to look like 30 minutes in your room, praising on your knees. Good. It could look like every single day, but I promise you, I don't do that. There's moments where I'm in my car having to drive to work because I'm five minutes late. I'm like, okay, God, I, I still got to pray. I don't know how the day's going to look, but I'm still going to pray. Prayer could be 30 seconds of just having gratitude or 30 minutes of allowing him to take place in the situation you're facing. When you choose to pray before anything, God is welcomed in, he's invited in, and he's going to do his good works whether you see it or not. Two, taking courage. 
Taking courage is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm not the one to really be preaching up here, but here I am today because I know that God is faithful to me, so why not be faithful to him? By just taking myself out of my comfort zone and going forth and doing the good works that he's also put in me. Three, being honest and vulnerable. God can work with you, but it also can be a little bit easier when you allow yourself to be open. It's just like the relationships we experience with friends, family, coworkers maybe, whoever it is, you have experienced people that are a little bit more closed. You could still work with them, but it's much more challenging. But when you decide to be open, honest, and vulnerable with the people around you, that's when God can really come through and help you. If you're at your weakness, weakest or at your strongest. Continuously being open, honest, and vulnerable with yourself and the others. Expose it all in the light and grows. They see like a little garden. Gardens don't grow when they're just completely in a cave and there's no light at all. There's got to be something happening. There's got to be some sun. There's got to be some rain. There's got to be some oxygen going in there. And for that to happen is for a garden to be out in the open where it's all seen. So you be open and honest. Four, knowing repentance leads to salvation. Repentance sets you free. Just like how I said, being open and honest, being vulnerable to God, helps him come through easier in your life. Allowing yourself to be open about the, the sins that you, that you have in your heart. What, because you're not, you're not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. We all have a sinful nature. We all have humanness coming out of us on a day-to-day -day basis. He knows that. That's why he's here. And that's why he sent Jesus, his son, to come and save us from what we already experience. You will not experience true freedom until you allow yourself to say, okay, God, I suck. <laughs> I suck because I thought this of my coworker. <laughs> and that was not nice because I actually said it out loud. Please forgive me. And can you help me somehow love her? <laughs> and he's going to be like, yes. I forgive you, and let's see what it would look like to forgive her. And I'll take you through it. And you don't no longer carry that weight of that sin. When you allow yourself to repent to him. Number five, even if you don't, still have faith. There's a song by Mercy Me that's called Even If. And he says that in the chorus, and even if you don't, my hope is still in you alone. There's a lot of expectations that we have towards all different kinds of people. We expect for our good moments to come, to come in a certain way. But God's plan is always different from ours. So you can't have the expectation for him to come through the way that you want him to. But instead, expect him to still come through no matter what, because he will. We all want certain things to look, or we want life to look a certain way. But if God's plan is better, that means he has greater for you in store. I told God I just want it to be a long way at the age of like, 12. As soon as I got to understand what leadership was in school, I was like, I just want to be a leader. I think it would be cool. I don't know what it means, but I would love to be a leader. And my thought was like just leading a few kids in school because there's like leadership programs. But God was like, no. No, that's not going to happen, and it didn't. I was no, nowhere near a leader throughout middle school and high school. But as soon as I turned 18, you have 
you're a leader now. And it wasn't just that. He was like, no, you have the gift of leadership. You have no choice but to use it. <laughs> so I will literally be in so many different moments. Someone's talking, and then it just stirs up inside. And, uh, and then I stand up and speak, like here I am today. <laughs> I expected to be a middle school leader. They didn't give it to me, but I was like, okay, I still have hope that I can be a leader. And because I did, I became a leader greater than I was before. Yes. Six, walk in his confidence. I know I'm not confident all the time, especially when I'm not feeling great. Like, <laughs> my voice is shot, but that's that's because I walk in his confidence. God is powerful. He is good. And he has nothing. Let me rephrase that. He always has the best at heart for you. So he has the best at heart for me. And when I am just at my lowest of lows and I feel like I can't face people, it's true, I can't. Because my flesh tends to always be scared and weak. And because I know who I am, I remember, remind myself who he is. And I'm like, God, you're strong. You know how to talk to your people. Great. I'm going to rely on you because I don't have the confidence. <laughs> and he shows up. And so when you want to use your faith, you just say, okay, I know where I'm at. I know who I am in this moment. I know who you are. I'm just going to rely on you because I do not have the strength to look in front of my grandma and say, I love you. But you do. So I'm just going to say, I love you too, my grandma. I'll walk in your confidence. Seven, sacrificing yours for his. I have a little story. There was someone I was very close to. She has been my best friend all my life. And when we became adults, or legal, <laughs> so 18, <laughs> um, that's when I was freed from my grandma and I was able to live with my parents. And her and I got to explore so many things of life. I finally got to do some kids before I really had to take on adult responsibilities, like now. <laughs> and because we were exploring so many things in Washington and trying different things, just exploring what the world has, I didn't waver in my faith, but she did a 180. She stopped believing in God. She turned to drugs. She turned to alcohol. She started to do things with other guys, and she was fine with it. She looked at me, and she was like, you can join. I was like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> but I'll just stay here. We'll still be close friends. I wanted to stay friends with her no matter what because she was in my life throughout my whole life. But because she was going a different path, it was made clear. God was saying, just let her go. I have her. But it was so hard to give up the friend that I was close with. I had no friends growing up. She was my only one. Why would I give you her and I give to be alone again? God's like, I have something greater for you. Just trust me. And so I let her go. And slowly but surely, Throughout years, God blessed me with strong, faithful women that have a heart for God. And i that's where I was like, okay, yeah, no, I'm not alone. And I have to let go of some of the things that are near and dear to my heart because God, right behind your back, something greater. It's just this vision I have. I think there's a, little, there's a picture I saw not too long ago. This little girl, she had this worn out teddy bear. Like it was dirty, it had holes in it, like it was falling apart. But she loves that thing so much. And she's standing right in front of Jesus crying because God is like, 
just just let go of the bear. She's like, no, I want this bear. I love this bear. It's been with me all my life. Jesus is like, do you trust me? She's like, yes. So she gives him the bear. Without her knowing, throughout the whole moment, right behind his back with this, this is big, fat bear. It's so brand new, and it's like the best material. No way it's going to rip. And she, he brings it up in front of her, and she's like, oh, my gosh. Like she completely forgot about the other bear. <laughs> There's this big teddy bear in front of her. She's like, new addition. It's better. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what happens to me, and that definitely happens to all of us when we allow ourselves to sacrifice the things that we love most into his hand because he will take that and he'll give you something greater. He'll take that, he'll fix it up new and improve it and give it to you in, a, in the best condition you never thought it could ever be in. Number eight, let control mold you. Sometimes it doesn't feel great being corrected. But if someone like Jesus takes the time to say, what you did was the greatest, this is what you've done, but this is how you can grow, shows that they love you. If someone loves you that much, they will tell you where you're wrong. And don't just leave it at that, like how my grandma was, where she pointed the finger and she's just like, you did this wrong and you did this wrong and why can't you do this right or whatever it is. No, if that person loves you that much, just like how Jesus does, they will correct you and say, let's see what it looks like to get better. Let's see what it looks like to make the mistake again. Let's see what it looks like to improve. Let's see what it looks like to get up to that next level doesn't just leave you there. Conviction is not condemn, condemnation. You do not get condemned. You get lovingly convicted. You will, you will say what you've done wrong, but yet you won't carry the weight. Jesus will still have that weight. And he's going to take you into something greater. He won't just leave you in the mistake that you've made. You won't be staying in the muck. No, you'll be all cleansed because Jesus is saying, that's okay, because my correction is going to make me a better person. And number nine, believing before seeing. I said this before, we believe that Jesus exists because we're here today. So believe that Jesus is still with you and will still guide you and will still be there for you, even if you don't see him. He has proved and just even in nature, that he is alive today. He is proof that he is still working amongst people around you in community like this, and even in your own life, when you go home and say, gosh knows what. If you are uncertain about many things in life and how things will go about, be certain that Jesus they'll be faithful to you. Because no matter where your faith is, he is always being, he will always be there faithfully. And if you don't know how to try to exemplify faith in your life, you don't know where to start in saying, I have faith in you, God, however that looks, read scripture. The Bible will show you how Jesus showed up. And then Jesus will show you how faithful he is in your life. If it wasn't for me trying to push through and pray, if it wasn't for me going to church to still worship no matter I kept crying, if it wasn't for me just kind of opening my Bible to read at least one verse, I wouldn't be able to see his faithfulness. And I wouldn't be able to see that example to then be that example. It takes two. God will always do his part. Your part is just to trust in him. With that said, I'm going to pray us out.
Wow, let's give up. Lord. Wow, that was incredible. So, aren't you glad that she's a teacher? Man, is this not a person that you would want teaching your children, not only about uh, school things, but also about faith as well? When we look at the um, Hebrews chapter 11, Man, you can see the story when you look at their lives. And just like with Aries, you can see that, that sometimes a gift, when it's opened, it comes through something that's maybe a little painful. But persevering past the pain and trusting anyway, I thought your points were absolutely beautiful. That's what a person does when they coach on faith. What an amazing thing, what an amazing person you are, and testimony of the faith of God. You are truly a person who exhibits the gift of faith. God bless you. And while we're here, uh, I'd like you to help me pray yeah. that we'll see the same gift that you have, that we'll see it out here in others. And uh, not only the children that are being raised, and maybe their gift will be less painful, you know. But when we look at the faith of Jesus, and he's with us through the whole thing, man, how much pain did he experience for us because he believed in each one of you. Man, he believed that you would trust him and that you would listen and that you'd be one of his, just like Miss Aries is. Man, he saw us way back, you know, when we didn't have anything else. And man... Look what he's done in your life. Absolutely amazing. He's brought it full circle. And now you're sharing your testimony, not only with us, but children every single day. Man. Aries, I'm going to ask you if you'll pray for us as we close this service out. Uh, after that, we'll stand for the benediction. And uh, we'll get ready for our Africa presentation. But Aries, would you pray for us? Okay. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord God, thank you for being in this place. We feel it. We feel your love. You give us renewed love and mercy on a day-to-day -day basis, and that just shows that you have faith in us no matter where we're at no matter what we experience, you always show up faithfully. And we can use that as an example to see how we could show up in this world faithfully. Lord God, I pray that whoever is experiencing doubt, uncertainty, challenging relationships, whether it's big or small, I pray, Lord God, that you come through. You come like a fresh wind. We feel your presence and your love, and we hear your voice. Let us see who you are, God, in the midst of our pain. Let us hear your voice as you speak, and let us not be afraid to come to you and pray. Let us not be afraid to not just come to you and pray, but to be honest and vulnerable, to open ourselves to you, to then receive your goodness, because you will not leave us empty-handed. You will not forsake us. And when we're frustrated, because we experience that daily, we can use that frustration in replacement faith. We can use our faith to replace that frustration that we experience in our life to allow you to come through and do what only you do best. We thank you, Lord God, that you're so faithful to us. We love you, Lord God, because you loved us first. And I pray over this congregation, Lord God, that we see faith in a whole nother way. We see faith 
not only get poured into us, but then overflow us onto others. We all have it, so show us how we can use that tool to help equip others, because faith is a beautiful thing. Let us not waver, but instead let us trust in you. We love you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. Amen. We're going to get ready to close the service. Don't forget that the first fruits are in the back. Please shop for uh, squash.